Hello, I'm Dr. Rosemary Francis, Chief Scientist here at Altair. Today I'm going to tell you about a new Kubernetes adapter that we've developed for PBF Professional, specifically to make it easier to run AI workloads in a mixed AI and HPC environment. The work to integrate PBS Professional with Kubernetes came out of a, a customer demand. They're a large multinational and multi-departmental corporation, and so they wanted to put together machine learning as a service across their organization. The goal was to make AI and machine learning tools widely available to researchers across different departments. Um, they needed to, to support applications like TensorBoard, TensorFlow, and Jupyter Notebooks. Um, they very much wanted to avoid having compute silos that could be very wasteful if they're not fully utilized. So they didn't want to have uh, a very um, clear divide between their AI and their HPC environments. And they wanted to run their workloads as containers on GPU enabled hardware. Um, this is something that PBS Professional can do. And so the part that we needed to add was the Kubernetes adapter to provide a uniform interface to both HPC and Kubernetes workloads. So first of all, looking at what P PBS Pro can already do, um, there is already integrated container support with PBS Professional. Um, this is across single jobs and multi-node jobs. Um, you don't need to do a, a Docker run and ahead of your application. All of that is taken care of by PBS Professional. But most importantly, the security and administration of having containers in your PBS environment is, is taken care of. So the user doesn't need to be part of a container group or um, they don't need to have root. They have, there's, there's, fine grain access control for, for, for HPC storage, for container images and for user credentials. And system administrators can whitelist certain options so they control which options users can pass into containers so they still have the control they need, but without giving them access to absolutely everything. And importantly, we've implemented port mapping so that web interfaces such as those used by Jupyter Notebook and Tesla boards, um, they just work. Another critical piece of this project was the GPU support in PBS Professional. So um, PBS Pro can already automatically detect um, GPUs and MIGs um, and, and schedule based on that GPU availability. Both those features are numero aware, so the application will be allocated memory that is close to the device that they're using. PBS handles the resource usage accounting, the device isolation, and it will automatically bind to the correct device with the right CUDA settings. Obviously, if you're using a system that doesn't support C groups, or if you're using a system with non-NVIDIA GPUs, then, then those, are, those are supported as well. So now let's look at the brand new PBS Pro Kubernetes adapter. This is still in beta release, so if you want to try it, then come and talk to us. The adapter allows automatic bursting of Kubernetes pods into PBS. So PBS loans resources to Kubernetes and then takes them back when the pod has completed. This gives users and administrators a single management plane for, for managing hybrid use of Kubernetes and PBS, uh, and workloads don't need to be modified either on the HPC side or on the Kubernetes side. So here is the overview of the architecture. So um, the pods are submitted to the Kubernetes API as per normal. In the case that the Kubernetes server doesn't have any available resources, of course, those pods will be pending. Now, the PBS Pro Kubernetes adapter sees those pending pods, recognizes that there are resources on the HPC cluster and submits a resource request to the PBS Pro scheduler. Those resources are then reserved. The, um, the PBS mom deploys the kubenet and once those resources have been added to the Kubernetes server, 
then the pod is deployed. Now, all of this happens in the background so that you don't need to think about it. All users see is they submit their pods to the normal API, and then those pods start running on the PBS Pro cluster. So the advantages of doing this is that obviously you can avoid having silos where you've got compute resources committed to being either Kubernetes or HPC. You can then take advantage of a lot of the advanced PBS Pro functionality, such as PBS budget can be used for account for both HPC and Kubernetes usage on your cluster. You can apply PBS flexible scheduling policies and fair share to the Kubernetes workload scheduled through PBS. You get a single management pane for hybrid use and you get a transparent user interface where users don't need to worry about where their workloads are running. They just submit them in the normal way and connect to them automatically through the web interfaces that they're used to. We're now going to take a look at a quick demo of the system. We've got a very simple setup with one Kubernetes control node and two PBS worker nodes, and we're going to be submitting AI workloads in Docker containers. So first of all, we're going to show you how we submit the pods to Kubernetes. These will be pending because the Kubernetes control node doesn't have any worker nodes. The PBS Pro Adapter will see those demand jobs and will automatically submit um, Kubernetes demands jobs to PBS Pro to prepare those resources. The PBS nodes are automatically added to Kubernetes cluster and then the pods are started. We're then going to submit some replica nodes and see how a second worker node is added. And then when we remove those replica workloads, you'll see that the, that the Kubernetes resources are returned and the worker returns to being a PBS Pro node. So Tanya, over to you. This is a short video to show the working of PBS Pro adapter. Initially, I have two nodes, uh, worker 03 and worker 01 in my PBS cluster. And one server node, uh, which is basically the control pane of Kubernetes in the Kubernetes cluster. I have one job, uh, HPC job, already running in the PBS cluster on the node worker 03. Now I'll try to submit one pod uh, named as TensorFlow with one CPU request and 700 MB memory request and another pod, pod one, with one CP request and 700 MB memory request. So both the pods are in the pending state. So this is the uh, corresponding demand job uh, submitted under the username PPS Productor. And it's running on the node worker 01 with one CPU request and 700 MB memory request. So both the pods are now in the running state. Both the pods uh, are now running on the node worker 01. Now I will try to submit one replica set. So I'll submit a replica set of one replica with one CPU and 100 memory, 100 MB memory request. So uh, the replica is now running on the node worker 01 because resources were available on this node.
I will configure this replica set to two replica set now. Configured. So one of the replica set is now in the pending state because our resources are not available on node worker 01 now. So this is the new demand job for, submitted for the uh, new replica on the node worker 0103 under the username PBS product. So the replica is now in running state. And if we check the nodes in the Kubernetes cluster, so the node worker 03 has been added to the Kubernetes cluster. Both the nodes are in job exclusive mode and they are only reserved for Kubernetes workloads. Now I will try to delete the replica set so that the node worker 03 can become idle. So uh, the node worker 03 is now idle. The nodes available in Kubernetes cluster. Then the node worker 03, which was idle, uh, will get deleted from the Kubernetes cluster, and the node worker 01 is only present in the Kubernetes cluster. If you check for the corresponding demand job, then now it's in the terminating state. So now the corresponding job 3103 has got deleted. Thank you for listening. Please stay on the channel for further demos, including running Jupyter Notebooks through PBS Pro and the Access User Portal.